so you have to give her her money back. Well, I'm not going to do that. We oh, have yeah, no you have to give her. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. I that's told what her you there are no refunds. And well, she that's will get too bad. Puppy. I don't care what you told her. Then you're a scammer. There have been several litigants in Judge Judy's court. Some have tried to get justice, while others appear due to some level of fraud committed. When these cases begin, Judge Judy attempts to understand how the relationship between the parties operates and why they're in court. The party's responses give her an idea of how to serve justice. And you took a deposit for a puppy that at that time was not born. Yes, we entered into a verbal agreement. Just a second, you took a deposit on a puppy that was yet to be born. Your Honor, yes, that's true. And the Judge Judy ensures she pays attention to each detail by the parties and asks follow-up questions in each conversation. For Judge Judy, the replies from parties make it easier for her to break down the dealings between them and determine who is at fault. For fraud allegation cases, she has her way of finding out whether the defendant is a scammer. Yes. So, let's say you tried to breed your dog in February. February, March, that means sometime around the beginning of April you would have had a litter. That's true. The defendant seems to be playing right into Judge Judy's hands with her court replies making understanding the deal between the parties easier. However, the defendant makes certain attempts to prove her intelligence by trying to twist some facts. Just a second, she picked one. You discussed with her, and she discussed with you, having a puppy from a particular dog. I've bought puppies from breeders. I select the mother, I select the stud, I give a deposit that usually it sometimes takes up to three. When parties appear at first, they tend to believe the judge is oblivious to some facts peculiar to their area of expertise once she owns them. Judge Judy never backs down from an opportunity to display her knowledge in topics, which amazes some litigants. Over the years, the judge has gathered experience both on and off the show, and it helps in deciding cases. You received in a five hundred dollar in two separate checks. I don't care whether it was right. she sent it to you in Wampum. She will be delivering in about a month. I don't so believe you. So she's about halfway through. I don't, unless you can prove that to me, then I'm telling you I don't. When Judge Judy realizes that a party might have scammed the other, she first makes it evident so that they do not claim ignorance. Some parties mastered feigning ignorance when they realized the judge had uncovered their scam. However, Judge Judy ensures she schools them and explains them clearly so everyone understands this. This is a perfect way of dealing with scammers in court, Judge Judy. Promise these puppies to anybody else. As far as I know, you take deposits of $500 from people and hold their money and say, eventually, you'll get a puppy. It could be this year, it could be next year, it could be 20 years from now. February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, 10 months later, there's still no life in being, still no puppy in being. So you have to give up. When the case has gotten to this point, Judge Judy engages in a tense exchange with the alleged scammer. While doing this, the judge ensures she asks enough questions to make the scam obvious and expose the fraud. It does not matter what the defendant says, the judge has already made up her mind, and only concrete evidence would convince her otherwise. Well, I'm not going to do that. We oh, have yeah, no you have to give her. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Then you're a scammer. Absolutely then you're not. Everyone then is you're, happy, then, and everyone always gets then, a puppy. Then you are a scammer. You've tried to breed, and you, right now you can't prove to me that she's pregnant. You've tried to breed. What happens if she unfortunately can't become pregnant anymore? When Judge Judy decides to get involved with a party like this, it's never a good experience for that person. People who get involved in fraud and end up on Judge Judy's show usually get owned by the judge. This even gets worse when they make attempts to argue with the judge and try to prove smart. You're telling me you keep the deposit and you're out of luck? She will have yep. a puppy. And right now, as far as I know, and you have no proof to the contrary, she's waited 10 months, and as far as I know, Song can't have any more puppies. Judge Judy's judgment gradually became evident, and the plaintiff had nothing much to do. When the plaintiff has established that the defendant committed fraud, Judge Judy takes control of the case and asks questions about the transaction. After her round of questioning, she then determines whether the defendant was a scammer or the allegations are untrue. Well, that's there, ridiculous. There was it's no not good business. Time frame. It's not good business. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $500. At the beginning of each case in Judge Judy's court, she reads through the initial statement of the parties to get a hint of their dispute. After doing this, the judge confirms her understanding with the parties in court. To ensure she gets a better idea of what transpired between the parties, Judge Judy questions them based on the facts they put before the court. When did he come to you with this check that he needed cashed? In October of 2000. 
15. When was the last time you would seen him? I really don't know. It probably soon after he finished with my bathroom. And when was that? Was it 2012? So several years before. The plaintiff claims that the defendant gave her a check which turned out bad and she intends to get a refund. Apart from this, the plaintiff also offered some help to the defendant in the past despite the bad check. Judge Judy does not like when there are crime allegations in her court because they are severe and require evidence to prove. In this case, she does not take an exception and delves into the allegations immediately. He came to my house and asked if he could stay in my pickup because he didn't have a place to stay. He, his family kicked him out of his house. So I let him stay in my pickup. And when he got the check, quite a bit of money, and I offered to cash it because I thought it, it looked like a legitimate cashier's check. The plaintiff presented a copy of the check and her account statement to show that it was a bad check and that she could not cash it. Judge Judy then understood that the defendant had a real case to answer and wanted to hear whether he would deny this or raise a reasonable defense. However, she also wants to know what he used the money for to understand what transpired between the parties. Did you give him the cash? Yes. And he... Is that correct? Yes. That she gave you the money? Yes. And what did you do with the money? Uh, I used it to move down to Tennessee. My daughters live in Tennessee, and I wanted to be closer to them. So you spent it? Yeah. When a person is alleged to have committed fraud, the judge does not immediately believe the incident and allows them to raise a defense. It's better to enable the defendants to explain themselves because they usually come up with different stories. From the defendant's response, the judge would then raise an understanding of whether he was a scammer. The check Who cares? Was you I spent did. the money. That's what you usually do with money when you do work and you get money. You spend no, but it. you spent the money. You didn't Correct. do work for her. I had no idea the check was bad until that, a month later. It doesn't matter. You spent the money. The defendant has finally accepted that he received the money and spent it on his needs. He also got informed that the check was bad and the plaintiff could not cash it. Therefore, he needed to refund her. He failed to refund the money, and the plaintiff had to pay from her bank. Judge Judy then asks for his excuse for not paying the money back. How to much money did you give? Just a second. How much money did you give her for rent when you were staying there? Uh, none. Yeah. None. That's I good. actually did much work for her during that Show month. Show me that the contract. At this point, it became evident to Judge Judy that the defendant was only trying to dodge liability despite receiving money from the plaintiff. He also tries to raise some weak defenses to his actions. The judge never allows issues like this to slide. The judge also asked if the defendant had evidence to prove his defenses. However, something unexpected happened. That wrote the check, because I thought the yes. guy wrote him a bad check. Yeah, I was I didn't, a bad I, check. At first, I thought... I he, don't care. He spent the money. And then I cashed another check for him that I found was completely fraudulent. This development made it evident that the defendant was a fraud and that he already performed a scam on the plaintiff. What troubles the judge is that the plaintiff needed to learn a lesson from the first transaction and suffered again. When this happens between parties, the judge blames both parties based on their roles and gives them a lesson. Adam, if somebody gave me a bad check and disappeared... I didn't disappear. <laughs> ...and disappeared, and then comes back and doesn't make good on the check to you, and if you're foolish enough to cash another check for him, you're going to eat the second check. Do you understand? Yes. It was evident that the judge understood everything that transpired between the parties and did not want to waste time with her judgment. The defendant performed fraud on the plaintiff and received money from her. He is yet to refund the money and does not even have a decent defense in court. Burn me once, shame on you. Burn me twice, shame on me, and don't get the courts involved in foolishness and foolish behavior. 27, 50, 69, judgment for the